Hello and welcome to my little world. So this week we're picking up some bits and pieces, um, kind of winding up some loose ends, taking care of little things. Um, you'll see how I made the railing for the outsides of my buildings and the uh, railing that goes up the steps, the brick steps to the church and just some other bits and pieces that I wanted to include this week. So thanks for coming. There's also a little surprise, which you will see later in the video. And hello to you, Mika and Torjan. And hello to you. Thank you for being here today and for coming to see what I've been doing. When I moved the bakery over here, I had uh, partially left it unfinished because it was next to the dress boutique and the dress boutique overlapped with it a little bit. So I had left holes on the side where the dress boutique cut into it. So I have added some foam board to it to make up for that part on the roof and also the side of the roof. And here that's just a piece of cardboard and all of this is going to be covered up. So I just pieced together some foam board and cardboard that I already had. And then I got some wood scrapbooking paper and I put that on the side of the building because that just was easier than making more of the, um, the oh, whatever that's called, the Tudor style beam and, and uh, stucco and stuff. So I just did that on the side. I also added this curtain, which I already had over here to make a backdrop for these buildings over here. I brought the dollar horses back over here. They're hitched to the fence here. And then there's also a watering trough here so that they can get a drink when they need one. And then, so over here, I also put, I, I cut the curtain. Um, I have a really clever way of dealing with these curtains. If I put Mod Podge along the seam and let it dry and then cut it, and then they don't fray at all. So it works really, really great um, to piece these curtains when I want to use them in other ways. And so then I also, added some wood scrap scrapbooking paper to the back of the train because I had never finished the top part of it because it was uh, you couldn't see the back of it so now that you can see the back of it I added some more wood to it. I put a green top on the bakery roof I just took some green art paper that I already had and covered it I didn't feel like doing more shingles. So it's a dark color and I think it shows up just fine. And then in the back of the building where there was a space because it was just right next to a building over on the other side, I added this piece of white paper, or not paper, it's a cardboard type of thing. Um, and I used black duct tape. I had a piece of acetate that I added for a window up at the top. So now the bakery has a side to it as well. And then just one other little detail. I added a little strip across the back of the train station in between the two sets of wood paper. I also finished the roof of the toy shop, which is made up of all these matchbook covers that were part of my parents' collection over a lifetime of going to restaurants and hotels. Most of these places don't exist anymore, I'm sure. 
So it was a fun use for something nostalgic to make it into the roof of the toy shop. And that was a street lamp falling over and catching my cord here. Hello. Besides using Mod Podge to cut my curtains and fray check them on the edges, I also use it to put them back together. I had cut this curtain into several pieces and was using it in different places. And now I'm using it all together over here. So what I've done is, uh, oh, where'd it go? There it is. This is the seam here. And I have taken a ribbon and put Mod Podge on it and then put it behind on both sides of the seam to hold the curtain together again. So I take things apart, I put them back together, I take them apart again. It's all part of my process. What am I doing here with popsicle sticks? which I stained with my stain marker in oak red. I mean red oak. I found these little food stamps on Timu and I put four of them together in each frame. And here they are on the wall of the bakery. I'm very pleased with them. I made this one at first with tongue depressors. So it's a little different from the others, but I still like it. I think they look just fine. I also gave Miss Millie some butter and eggs in her bowl made out of my clay that doesn't dry. And there's a magnet on this window that helps it close. There's also a fire hydrant at the end of the alley. The toy shop was a bit unfinished, so I added a few little details to it. I added this sign, made a frame for it, and just printed out something I found online for this little sign. I also painted the black behind it uh, second coat because I had never done that. Added this little black line down this side of the door. I just used the lines of the box uh, as part of the building and the cardboard color is also part of the building. And I had made this sign for it with some stickers I had and then I just set up a display in the window to kind of hide what's behind it in the toy shop so the kids can't see into Santa's workshop there while he's working for Christmas. I also added a little bit of coloring to the street lamps here to give them a little more definition. I used my silver oil pastel crayon for that, just so you can see the details of the lantern a little bit more. I made the fence railing for the edges of the two brick areas outside the dress boutique and the bakery and toy shop. I used tongue depressors, which I cut in half, and toothpicks, and then I painted it black. So here's the fencing all done. In this section, 
I decided to add a little bit of gray paint to it to give it a little more dimension. This is kind of the black section. It's got the black street lamps and the black hitching post. So I like that like that. But over here, I ended up painting this one white. As you can see, there's white fencing down around the park. And when I put the black up here, I just, I didn't like it. It looked too plain and I tried adding some gray to it like the other one, but I didn't like that either. So I've actually left it black on the inside and then I painted it white and I put these little flowers onto it. I got these little paper flowers at Hobby Lobby and they're in the the kind of teal aqua colors that are on the dress boutique. So that's what I ended up with on the fence. And I think it's very pretty. I'm thinking about what to do about the stair railing on the new brick steps that go up to the church facade. And I have just enough tongue depressors left after using them to make the railing that goes around the dress boutique and the bakery and toy shop. And so I think I'm going to use these. And I also have these wooden buttons. I've had them for a long time and never really used them for much. They're really pretty, but they're just, they're just plain wood on the back. And I think I'm just going to use them as stands for these tongue depressors and just glue them on so that I can then glue the button onto the paper steps. And then I think I'm just going to, up at the tops of the tongue depressors, I'm just either going to glue or make a hole and put like a string or a ribbon through them to connect them at the top. You know how they have that kind of uh, railing at movie theaters and churches and things like that. So I think that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to paint them black. So here's another experiment. Let's see how this works. I have my Gorilla Wood glue and I have a bunch of washi tape that I have used on the uh, tall townhouses and we'll probably use more of it but I figure this yellow is probably not a color I'm going to use uh, on those. So I'm just going to put some Gorilla Wood glue on this. Try using the washi tape to stabilize it. And then get it to stand up. Whoop. like that. This blue paper is shiny so the glue won't stick to it. Let's see. So I think if I let that sit for a bit until the glue starts to thicken up I can get it to stand up. I put the washi tape on the buttons 
and then glued them and decided to lay them down till they could dry better. Then I painted them black with my acrylic paint and I glued each one of them to a spot on the brick steps and added these cords to them. I was very pleased with the way I was able to get the cords to loop. It, uh, when I first got the cord, it was kind of bent and I wasn't sure how well they were going to work, but it worked out really well and I just glued them one at a time. That, those white spots are glue that's still drying. But I glued and clamped each one. But now I want to show you this. Surprise! So I said that I was going to paint the street lamps black, and I did paint a couple of them black. But after I got them painted black, and I put them over here against these buildings, I decided that I liked the white better. So I decided to keep the ones that I already had white, these four. There's two black ones over by the bakery and the toy shop, and then there's going to be two more black ones uh, by the theater when I get that made. But I decided to keep these white, and I realized that I couldn't just paint the black um, lamps white because the insides would still be black. I couldn't get to the insides to paint those. So I decided to just buy some little white lanterns and they weren't hard to find. And then I added some little gold paint to them because they were just plain white when I got them. So I added some gold to them to go with the gold that was on the the drawer pulls on the top and it's kind of nice to keep the drawer pulls this way because they had that gold on them they came that way and so it's nice to have the touches of gold and then I just painted the uh, bases white and left the spindles the color they were in, and I had sanded them but it didn't really matter that they were sanded it just makes them look less glossy and a little more worn. So I'm very pleased with them. They're right here next to my road. My road is a couple of long runner rugs that I bought. They're just like rubber on the back. I have these two mats here that look like stone and then the two mats run all the way across the front of the building so that makes a nice road and then i also painted one of the hitching posts white to go over here as well so this is the second hitching post that i made and then i have this beautiful horse it's hitched up to it here, and I got this for $10 at Goodwill, and I was just so happy to find him because he is so pretty and just makes a perfect addition to my village. So here are my street lamps at night. They all light up. They have little batteries and little switches to turn them on. And I love that I can light them up at night and they'll be especially fun during the Christmas season, which is my favorite time to be decorating. And I do lots of fun things. And while other people start thinking about Halloween this time of year, I start thinking about Christmas because I do lots of things then. So this is how these lamps are lit up. Ooh, that looks pretty. I like that. 
And then I also have a couple of lanterns back here in the hotel. And these are Christmas ornaments. And I put these little, they're called LED balloon lights. And I got them on Amazon. And you just pull the little tab out of them and they, they light up. And they last for quite a while, sometimes like, sometimes weeks. They will get dim, but sometimes I've used them in my Lego village because they're really uh, small and they fit well in that. But I can also put them inside these lanterns and just leave them lit if I want because I have a bunch of them. And then when they give out, and I just replace them with more. So here's these lamps over here. And since I didn't end up using all of the black lanterns that I ordered, I have put some of them inside the buildings. So there's one hanging in the bakery and there's one in the toy shop and there's also one hanging in the train station so it's lots of fun to have my village lit up at night and thank you for coming to see this this week and i'll have more fun stuff next week bye bye